Shelton has already homered tonight. And that one down the left field line, curving, and it is gone. A walk-off win for Colby Shelton as that one stays just inside the foul pole. Second homer of the day. The first time he's had three hits as a Gator, none bigger than that one. And we are going home. Welcome back, College Baseball Central fans. We're going into another show, The Weekend Rotation. Every Saturday morning, we bring you the best of college baseball. We get you set up for the rest of the weekend. We talk about Friday night's games. Really excited here this week. Uh, we've got Monty Taylor. How are we doing, Monty? Uh, I'm I'm great. I'm in a uh, in a vacation uh, house in Winston-Salem listening to the rain. Um just got word that that game has been pushed back to 7 uh, p.m. tonight in hopes of uh, in hopes of getting that game in tonight. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. Um, loving that uh, some conferences have started conference play and ready to ready to talk some baseball. Yeah, we're underway. We got some great games coming forward. We're going to talk about all the games that happened on Friday night. AJ, how we doing down there? Doing well. I I did battle with a couple of wasps this morning, but I I came out victorious and unscathed. Uh, <laughs> unlike some of the teams from yesterday. Yeah, there's some teams that took some hits yesterday. Didn't quite get up to living up to expectations. Some first time losses. We'll talk about those when we get into it. Jake, how we doing? Nice hat. Love that. Love the hat today. Yeah, had to show off. Had to rep for the Beavers. A little throwback. Um, doing great. Like Monty said, we started conference play. Some teams had their first tests. Um, like many Ivy Leaguers, Columbia fa- failed their first test. So really excited to see where we go from here. <laughs> Few teams did fail some tests, so we're gonna get underway right away. We had a great matchup, Duke and Wake Forest. Monty, I'm going to go to you first on this one because you were live on scene there. The Duke offense has just been staying alive. We thought this was going to be a pitching matchup. Both pitchers knocked out a little early. 8-5, Duke wins this one. Tell us about it, Monty. Uh, yeah, the script went out the window pretty quickly. Um, it was. Uh, it ended up being a shootout uh, in the early innings. Santucci and Hartle, uh, they just... It was. I, I think it was more to do with both offenses having really good plans of approach. Um, Santucci wasn't as sharp as he had been in his first three starts, and and this Duke offense just continues to impress. Um, and 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 it, the other on the on the flip side though, Seaver King coming out party maybe. Um, a lot of people are talking about his home run, but um, there I need I need somebody to pull some video on his double that he hit in the first inning. He had a 95 mile an hour fastball up near his chin uh, level, chin level, that he tomahawk chopped for a double at 106 miles an hour. So, um, a lot of I, I need more video of that. That's more impressive to me than the laser shot home run. But um, just an outstanding college baseball game, um, and and excited for for two more games here in Winston Salem. Absolutely, it's class of the ACC right now going on. Duke and Wake Forest. AJ, I know we were really pumped about this series here. This is the Show Me series. It's disappointing it's early, but it's also great that it's early in the season for us. Duke comes away with the 8-5 victory. Big for Duke, right? Yeah, and that's, Duke did what, you know, going into the year it was like, oh, what's the offense going to look like? Well, it turns out it's just one of the most dynamic offenses in the ACC, maybe even college baseball. Um, it's depth. There's no easy outs that line up. Um, AJ Gracia, got to gotta rep my fellow AJ here. He hit two monster home runs. He has five home runs on the year, freshman. Uh, He is the kind of guy who uh, reminds me of, you know, just a a shot in the arm of like a Charlie Condon or Ethan Petrie last year that you put him in and it's, he's not behind. He's not trying to figure it out. He's going and he's squaring up Josh Hartle in a hurry, uh, squaring up very good pitching. They're going to need him um, for the rest of the year, but to watch this Duke offense explode against a very good pitching staff. That was very promising to see. It, it, this is this is the series for Duke. Though it's like I right, time to see if we actually belong in the ACC, belong with the big dogs. And after one game, I think it's safe to say they might be the big dog in the ACC right now. 
There's a reason why some of us have had Duke in their Omaha eight since the beginning of the season. Monty, I know you want to add a little bit more to that one. Yeah, it just reminded me with uh, uh, talking about uh, AJ Garcia. Um, he was talking about how he couldn't really see what was coming out of Hartle's hand, and he just assumed that it was going to break on him. So if it was looking like it was going to hit him, he was going to swing because it wasn't going to hit him. It was going to end up in the zone. So it's uh, just interesting that you know, just the the a freshman just with that kind of ability and, and maturity and knowing what to do was really impressive. And, and Pollard talked about him a lot in the post game as well, talking about how he just does not chase. He had like a 4% chase rate in the preseason in the, the analytics they did. So it's just, I mean, just a really good plate discipline guy. That's not going to swing and miss, not going to chase outside the zone. So. Yep. Good for Duke. Big win for Duke. We'll see if they get that game in today with Monty down there again, watching this one here. Uh, game two, hopefully we get that one in later tonight. Speaking of another game that finished late and very walk-off fashion but didn't really impress was St. Mary's 11, Florida 12. Colby Shelton, as we watched the video there, he did hit the walk-off bomb to give Florida the victory. But, AJ, there's question marks for this Florida team. Yeah, and I think this is the question mark going into the year. Is is Caden Fisher um, a, a true number one guy? Is he a Friday guy? And he's struggled early. It, it, it has been it's been rough for him. Um, offense, we know they're going to be able to carry games. It's what they've had to do. Um, but it's it it's hard to win when you're giving up four or five runs on Friday in the first three or four innings. Uh, the stuff is definitely there to pitch better. He needs to get off to better starts. He's allowing a lot of runs in the first inning. Um, bullpen, you know, challenging some depth. Um, they've had a couple injuries. Some big time freshmen have gone down. It, it, it will be interesting to see if they mix up that rotation because you can't really move CAGs out of the Sunday spot. Um, and it might be too early to slide Liam Peterson to Friday. I do think he's the Friday night guy of the future. Um, he was my pick for SEC freshman of the year. It will be interesting to see, um, if or when a change is made, or maybe you know that switch just flips and Cade locks it in for SEC play, which is entirely possible. Very talented dude. Yeah, and we've seen this happen where you know you got to kind of move your lineup around. You got to get ready for SEC play. I have major concerns for Florida and SEC play if this is how the pitching is going to go. They're going to have to shore some stuff up if they want to win these series in the SEC. It's just a lot tougher to go out there and win these games, especially on Friday night if you're giving up that many walks and giving up that many base runners. Just tough. TCU won, Kansas three. Jake, just four hits and two walks for TCU. Another loss for Peyton Tolley. This this TCU team battles, battles, battles. Their first loss of the year. It's it, Kansas is a good ball club, but to only score one down there, that's a tough start for your Big Twelve play. Yeah, I mean, every the first time you lose a game, I think it always kind of hurts the most. You kind of feel a little bit human, but unfortunately, we found TCU's kind of Achilles' heel. It's playing in the Midwest when it's cold and windy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they'll see that on their road to Omaha. Um, Peyton Tolley pitched really, really good. Um, yeah. Kansas had a plan of attack to kind of wait him out and get into that bullpen. And I, I, Silos kind of left him in one batter too long. But again, it's so early that you're kind of still getting a feel for your pitchers. I think what really impressed me was Reese Dutton. The USC Upstate transfer, his last three starts, he's gone 19 innings, 11 hits, two runs, he feels like a Friday night guy that we haven't seen from Kansas in, in my lifetime, if I'm being honest with you. He is a Friday night guy in every sense of the word. I think TCU battles back. I think they come out with a little bit of a fire because once you drop that first game, it almost is kind of like the opening day kind of comes back again. So I expect TCU to kind of take the next two games of the series. And again, it's only one loss. They were one of the final four teams. Um, depending on when UC Irvine lost, they could have been a final three. That's undefeated. I, I think that the, there's nothing to worry about if you're a TCU fan going forward. Irvine did lose after because it was the second game of their doubleheader against Fresno State. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's it's just one game. 1-3 one, just didn't feel great there with the sticks, but they can turn that around pretty quickly there. And, and you know, the bullpen and totally only giving up three total runs also on the other side, not a bad effort there. Uh, they, they did hold Kansas still as three runs. Runs were not – necessarily a problem for this next one texas 22 texas tech eight i'm gonna let aj start because i know you got lots to say about this jake so aj 22 <laughs> to 8 for texas just coming out and crushing yeah and i we all had a bad taste in our mouth after texas you know kind of just 
crapped the bed last weekend. Bullpen really let him down. But if you look at those games, uh, the offense has been very productive. They had two of those losses. They had 10 runs and 11 runs on offense and lost the game. That's entirely on the pitching staff. And that was, you know, concern coming into the series is what is the pitching depth look like? Well, they gave up eight runs. They scored 22. So no one's even really looking at, you know, they, they burned some guys towards the end of the game who aren't really going to throw big time innings for them because they had that luxury. Uh, so the offense is legit. The question has been pitching and pitching depth. Um, I, I think this is more of a concern for, you know, Texas tech. It's, it's the, the big 12 opener and you go out and you do that. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to bounce back from 22 to eight, uh, not saying it hasn't been done, but to get blown out like that, that is, that's a rough, rough way to start. Maybe it's, um, you know, Texas hearing all the hype about, or the lack of hype, hearing all the noise about, oh, they're overrated, oh, they shouldn't be ranked, uh, and then coming back and answering the bell. I want to see what um, what Texas Tech does today in response. Yeah, I think a lot of today is how does Texas Tech respond to that loss, you know, getting beat up at home 22-8 to eight there. Jake, I know you were just saying this Texas team finally came alive. They still did give up the eight runs, like AJ did mention. They, they didn't really shut down Texas Tech, but it was all Texas early, and it just kind of kept rolling. Yeah, I mean, they got to save the bullpen a little bit. Um, LeBaron Johnson kind of had an LSU-esque type start where he was just pitching a ton of pitches, and uh, Tech was laying off. He threw 110 pitches as they kind of tried to get him the win. But, I mean, I'll start with the one positive for Texas Tech. Bravo hit a long, long home run. But other than that, I mean – you really have to feel just sick to your stomach if you're Texas Tech this morning. It, it really is kind of set up for them to go in, keep Texas down. I mean, Texas is kind of at an inflection point in their season where it can spiral out of control quickly, and they give up a four spot in the fourth, in the first, uh, seven spot in the fourth. Six of their nine hitters had multi-hit games, and that doesn't include uh, Jared Thomas, who's truly been their best hitter. He, he only had that one hit. And again, Will Gasparino – he had been really, really struggling. We'd seen with elite pitching. He had five hits, including a grand slam. Ryland Galvan had a grand slam. Porter Brown, who's really been struggling. He's picked it up the last few games, obviously. He had a home run. But again, I, every time I watch this Texas Tech team on a Friday, I just think, hey, I don't think that this guy should be their starter. Like Mason Molina at Arkansas should really kind of be their Friday night guy. And I think that that's really going to be the story of this team is they just don't have the pitching depth because their starter left them for some reason. And I really, really worry about this Texas Tech team going forward. Obviously, the Big 12 isn't going to be this huge, huge gauntlet, but I don't see this Texas Tech team going very far at all. This one told me a lot more about Texas Tech than it did about Texas. Yeah, we still got two more games of this series here. There's a lot of time here to make up, but uh, it was very surprised to see Tech kind of just give up that many hits and runs. I mean, it was... It wasn't one thing. It was a lot, and it just kept piling on itself. So good win for Texas. Tough loss for Texas Tech here to start off the Big 12 season. Monty, a team that did take care of business but wasn't necessarily impressive. NC State wins both games of the doubleheader with BC, 5-4 and then 9-1. I wasn't necessarily taken away by the wins there by NC State. I'm glad that they got those wins, but the pitching staff giving up four to BCU. And then the second game, at least giving up the one, was that was a lot better. But I, I'm not impressed with this NC State team yet. Yeah, they're just they're just taking care of business so far, but they haven't quite impressed in any of of their series. I know they did they had three run rule games last weekend against Towson, but you know it's that was Towson. Um, so you know this was an opportunity. They they get the win. So as an NC State fan, you've got to be really happy about that. Um, you know, BC is in a weird little uh, transition phase still um, under Todd Internato. Um So they're they're kind of still trying to find that new identity uh, under his tutelage. Um, I know he he likes to he likes to steal bases a lot at Walford. They haven't really done much of that at BC. They're not really hitting for a lot of power. Um, and NC State was up in that game, I believe, for nothing. Um, and, and for for BC to come back um, against the you know against the bullpen, not great, but. Ultimately, um, they they get to Tyler Mudd, um, who's been BC's best reliever by far. I think he's given up two earned runs on the whole season in like 16 or 17 innings. Um, but uh, they almost squandered that chance because they got the leadoff triple from from Souls, I believe, and and then Serrano and um, 
blanking on who else it was. They they both got out, and so all of a sudden, one out away from going to the twelfth inning, and uh, Garrett Pennington luckily was able to single through the right side to uh, to to drive in the, the the run and win that game. So um, much better job in the second game. Um, High Phil Hollis Fanning, PJ Labriola, they they pitched uh, combined one earned run, uh, much better. Um, that game was fairly close till about the fifth inning. Then they had a Cozart, uh, Cozart started all, uh, started things off with the lead off, uh, not lead off double, but an RBI double. And then they just broke it open from there. And from the fifth inning on, it was all NC state. So, I mean, you, you've got to be happy if you're an NC state fan, but you're still not quite sure what this team is capable of. Yeah. And there's question marks out there, but you know, it's tough to get wins, and especially if you're getting a doubleheader win, those are always tough to come by and win both those games. So good for NC State to start off this ACC play with that. Not necessarily impressive, but you'll take the wins if you're an NC State fan. Another team that's rolling, Jake, DBU, 9, San Diego, 2. This is not a bad San Diego team. DBU hit them early and just kind of cruised the rest of the game, but this, this DBU offense has been something special. Yeah, um, they, they truly have. I mean, San Diego obviously has a team as they went and took a game from Texas in that first series. So they're very capable of beating a DBU team. Um, they got to Randall, who's been really, really tremendous um, for, I think it's the Torinos, the Toros. I've never really got a pronunciation on San Diego's mascot. Toreros. Um, Toreros. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, he They really got to their pitcher early, and I think he's a guy. And again, they started this seventh inning fourth run with an error. And that really, or sorry, the seventh, uh, six inning, seven runs started with an error. I mean, it seemed like if you give an inch with this DBU team, they just take a mile in a good way. Um, I am really, really impressed with this DBU team. They impressed me last week. They kind of got on my radar a little bit. And the sky kind of is the limit for this DBU team. I think that they're going to be the class of their division going forward. Um, I'll talk about it later, but I think them and Sam are going to be the two teams that really, really stand out in that, that conference. But exciting, exciting stuff for the DBU Patriots coming forward as they've made it through kind of the challenging part of their schedule. Yeah, AJ, I know we talked about this DBU offense, but really the pitching staff took care of business also to hold San Diego to two runs. That's a good San Diego offense. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Johnson is a true he's a true ace. Uh, ERA right now, 2.77, uh, whip under one. He has 42 strikeouts in 26 innings. Uh, it, he He's just everything you want in a Friday guy, especially at a school like Dallas Baptist. I mean, he can go and be the Friday night guy at a lot of schools across the country. I'm talking SEC-level schools. Like, it, there is there's true high-end talent there. Um, but, yeah, it, it is – DBU is – they were definitely underrated um, coming into the year. Um, Grant J on offense is just a weapon. Um, eight home runs. They have like six guys hitting over 300 who are all starters for them. Uh, it, they, There's no real weak spot in this team. Maybe depth of bullpen, but that tends to be a lot of teams, you know, weaker point. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm excited about this DPU team. Um, I feel like we getting back to the, the years of Dallas Baptist challenging for super regionals. Yeah, I, I, I look at this DBU team and I go, oh, man, they're going to get sent to Corvallis in a super regional type, and this is going to be another one of those battles. Uh, very familiar. Good team. The, the the bullpen, I'm not as concerned at the moment because of the runs that they're scoring, but if they get in those tight ball games, it is going to be a question mark. But they keep scoring nine runs. They're not going to have to worry too much about that bullpen. Uh, they're just taking care of business there. The opposite side of this, Monty, UNC 2, Pitt 1, a pitcher's duel came out. Uh, pretty good win for UNC. Pitt's still a very good baseball team. That loss doesn't say too much about them, but it is a good win for UNC at home there to take care of Pitt. Yeah. Um, I, as much as I was expecting, uh, I was about to say louder, uh, Hartle and, and Sam Tucci to be a pitching duel, I was expecting this one to be a, a shootout a little bit. Maybe not necessarily on Friday night, but I, I expect a little bit more runs, but Certainly over the next two days, I expect more of a shootout between these two teams. But uh, Ryan Andrade uh, for, for Pitt had a really good bounce back start after having a not so good one against Oklahoma last week. Um, unfortunately for him, 
his offense couldn't get the job done. I mean, Luke Cantwell and CJ Funk going 0 for 7, that's that's not ever going to be too good for Pitt. They got to get those two guys going if they want to win baseball games. Um, but then you got to be impressed with with the UNC bullpen. You know, they they bring in their three best relievers in, in Dalton Pence, Math, uh, Matthew Mathis and um, uh, 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 Matt Poston. There we go. Um, <laughs> and and those three guys really shut the door. Folger Boaz had another re- pretty good start. Uh, you know, um, so you got to be really impressed with that shutting down an, uh, a pit offense that scored. Uh, 38 runs last week in Las Vegas. So really surprising scoreline, but I, I don't think we're going to see that kind of scoreline over the next two days. Um, the question I have about UNC is can, can they hit because they've had some struggles. We saw it in the East Carolina series a couple weeks ago um, when they faced this premier pitching, you know, conference level pitching, are they going to be able to hit? Um, even somebody like Vance Honeycutt, he doesn't, he, he's got six home runs, but he's also got no doubles. So, you know, you're not getting as much as you'd like to see, but the nice thing you, you, you know, as a Tar Heel fan, other than the pitching is that Parks Harbor showed up in a big way yesterday. He had the only two extra base hits in the ball game, a home run and a, and a, and a double. So you gotta be pleased with that. Yeah, and, and when when Pitt's dudes don't hit, this team's a little bit lackluster on the offensive side. But really good pitching performance by both teams there. Jake, I know I know we were watching this one here, and, and that pitcher's duel kind of broke out when the rest of the country is hitting runs, and we're looking at a two-one game between two really good ACC teams. Uh, loss for Pitt, win for UNC. Doesn't really say either thing about either team, though, right? I came away really, really impressed with Folger Boaz. I mean, he didn't really have his best stuff, and he still kind of went and shut down a pit lineup that we have been very, very high on. He walked a ton of guys. He was kind of not erratic, but he was not really pounding the zone like we're used to seeing from him. Um, And the flip side of that is Luke Cantwell was just off for them. He really wasn't seeing the ball very well, and they only lose by one run. So I came away, while Pitt lost, I came away very, very impressed with them. But Osuna. For UNC, I mean, he just reminds me of like a UVA player where he just grinds, grinds, grinds every at bat, makes you work for every pitch. Um, I came away really, really impressed with his approach at the plate. It almost felt like he was working off of like a different scouting report as he was laying off those close pitches. But again, while Pitt lost, I think this game told me a lot about what Pitt is as a team. Yeah, nothing to be upset about there. Just one game there. They're going to go out and get another one here in UNC. So we'll see what happens here today. Again, folks, if you guys liked our content here, make sure you like and subscribe on the YouTube channel at collegebaseballcentral.com. We also have the at collegebaseballcentral.net, our website. You can go check out all of our articles, all of our wonderful writers and shows that we do. We cover everything from SEC, ACC, Texas, uh, and then we also do a West Coast pod as well called The Best Coast. Come join us for all those things and join us on Twitter as well as College Baseball Central. And if you use code CBC15 at Home Field Apparel, you get 15% off your first order, and they have really great stuff. Go check them out. All right. Oregon gets walked off by Arizona State. 4-5. Great game there. Brandon Compton hits a pair of home runs and has an RBI single. But other than that, it was it was kind of a lackluster offensive game. Really good start from Thomas Burns. Just the nine walks were the question mark, but he did have the eight strikeouts. Uh, he only gave up three hits. Jake, when we were looking at this one, Arizona State kind of surprising a lot of people that they went out and got that win at home, but it's a big win for them. Yeah, it is a big win for them. Uh, Coach Lossnagel talked on Friday that the Arizona State lineup was a lot deeper than people had kind of given them credit for. They loved just kind of grind, grind, grind. They had a ton of two-strike counts that ended up being walks or hits. Um, they had six – or sorry – Five one-run innings, so they were really scoring just in a variety of different ways. But Brandon Compton's the one that I really want to highlight for Arizona State. He came in as a pitcher, had a UCL injury, is now sitting at their DH. He had two hits. He's sitting up over 450. I've been really, really impressed. It's kind of he's accepted this new role as he's not going to be pitching this year, but he's still helping that Sun Devils ball club in a variety of different ways. I mean, he's just had quality, quality at bats. Yeah, I think the story of this one, though, for me, was that Oregon could not score with bases loaded several times in this game. They had so many base runners, and they just could not get those runs across. Couldn't get that timely hit. Uh, But again, pretty good uh, starting matchup there between R.J. Gordon and Thomas Burns. They both went uh, five and a third. Pretty much what you'd expect from those two Friday night starters. But 
Arizona State wins this one in walk-off fashion in the bottom of the ninth. Monty, Virginia 5, Miami 6. Why do they do this to us every year after going undefeated in the preseason and then they come out and they just struggle? Like, I just don't get it here. They start ACC play with a loss. Well, well, to be fair, Mark, everybody goes undefeated in the preseason. <laughs> fair. I know, I know you meant non-conference. Um, no, um, no, uh, it, it was not a, a great, uh, a great performance. They were up um, four nothing, and then five three, and they just completely blew it. I mean, five unearned runs. Uh, Miami only had five hits. Uh, UVA left thirteen base runners on uh, uh, stranded out there. Uh, they wasted Cullen McKay's really really good start. He went five and one third in his first weekend start. Um, had a career high eight strikeouts. Um, but yeah, Didowick homered for the third consecutive game, but they really missed Henry Godbout. He was injured in, uh, the midweek game and he's hit, he was hitting right around 500, led the team in, in, I, I believe extra base hits and walks. And they, they really missed him, which is, which is interesting because later on in the ninth inning is they're, they're getting ready to, you know, potentially tie this baseball game at six, six Didowick standing on third base with one out and, and where God bout would have been in the lineup is who was up in the ninth inning. Um, and ultimately those guys couldn't get the job done. Miami holds on to win um, big, big upset for Miami. Cause they, they just, I, I hate to say it. Miami's just not that good. Um, so that's a big, big loss for Virginia. Not a great performance. They've got some concerns um, that uh, uncharacteristic defensive errors, and then the bullpen just kind of fell apart. Yeah, and if Virginia wants to compete with the Wakes of, you know, Wake, Duke, Clemson, they got to win these series here against these teams like Miami, and, and that's just not a good way to start this one. Jake, were you? I was more surprised by Virginia not scoring and leaving those runners on base than anything in this one, and then giving up the under and runs, just very uncharacteristic loss there for Virginia. Yeah, I mean, it truly was. I've, I've kind of used the analogy of a python that just wraps around opposing pitching staffs. But A-plus for this Miami staff, um, only two runs in the final five innings. They pitched tremendous outside of Zeal, who, again, we know what we were going to get Friday night from him. The five pitchers that came in behind him just really shut down a Virginia team. They really kind of danced out of danger all night. Blake Sear had a knock. I know his average is not where it needs to be. And if Miami can kind of get him rolling, I think that this is going to provide the lineup with a lot more depth. And then Cuvay for Miami. He had those three RBIs. I would be – this is going to be a team where we look back. They're not really going to accomplish that much, but they can hang their hat on beating the uh, UVA Musketeers or whatever they get called, Monty, on Friday night. This was a signature, signature win for a Miami team that honestly probably isn't going to have a lot of bright spots, but exciting, exciting stuff. I got to give Miami kind of their props because again, you got to get it when you can get it. He's way, more excited. He's, opener. he's way more excited about this than when Miami beat Florida once last week. It's just, <laughs> um, it's, Jake is just, he's, he's going to Jake. He's, he's trying to, he's trying well, to sorry, Monty. I have, I have more respect for the who's than I do for the Gators. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, Charlotte nine, Maryland five, AJ, this, this, this Charlotte team has been so up and down and same with Maryland. They've really had some high spots and some low spots this year, but Charlotte goes out there, takes care of business, gets that win nine, five at home big for Charlotte there. Yeah. I mean, Charlotte, yeah, I, I love the 49ers I went up there to watch our buddy Cam Fisher play. I was currently in the Astros organization right now, but he is, um, he's not there anymore. Uh, a lot of new faces there. You can tell they've just been trying to gel, especially on an offense, try to come up with an identity. And their identity yesterday was, we're just going to step on the pitcher's throat right away. Um, scored three runs. The starter went a third of an inning. Uh, and that guy still has an ERA under three, uh, Kenny Lippman for Maryland. Um, it, it just never even felt like a game after the first inning or so. Charlotte just went out, immediately set the tone, took control, and it felt like never really let Maryland back in it. Um, I know they tried to respond a little bit with a four-run inning in the middle innings, but it was it felt like Charlotte through and through. Um, pitching needs to be more consistent for them, for them to win on Saturdays and Sundays. The staff is experienced. Um, it looks like the offense is starting to come around and build an identity a little bit. Um, Thad Ector is 
kind of the dynamo at the top of the lineup. Really like what he brings, power, speed, good defense, kind of a true just all-around guy that they need um, to kind of be their difference maker. Uh, but I'm very optimistic about Charlotte finding their stride as they enter conference play. If Charlotte can figure out the offense, the pitching has been pretty good this year comparatively to last year where they really had some big question marks on the pitching side. If they figure this offense out, this this team can win the conference. They're, they're a very good uh, 49er ball club. We love Charlotte. Uh, we also love Maryland here on this broadcast here. But it was it was a good game, and, and Maryland really – they tried to come back a little bit, like you said. Wait, Monty, why did you make that face? Do you not like Maryland? They're they're the pride I, of the South. As a, as a Virginian, no, I do not like Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monty, Ma- you get your your take right now. The five nine loss for Maryland. We we know that the Big Ten has been a little bit all over the place here, and Maryland has been one of those consistent teams going out there and losing this one. Though it says a lot of good things for Charlotte, but does it say anything about Maryland? Um. Uh, I think they're still trying to figure things out as they're there. We talked about it with BC. Maryland's also in a transition right now as well. And they've lost a lot of guys from last year's team as well in that transition. So they're still trying to figure things out. So, I mean, 10 and four is not something I'd be that upset about um, as a Maryland fan, especially given some of the schedule. I mean, we just talked about how Pitt impressed us and Maryland's beaten Pitt. So, you know, there are things to be to be uh, pleased about and excited about. But, yeah, yesterday's game, I mean, going down, I mean, they were down nine nothing after a couple innings at that point. You know, it's 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 hard to, to find the positives there. They did. They did have a five run inning, which is which is nice, but um, they were never able to really get back into it. But there's still two more games in this series that they can get it right and still take this series. Absolutely. I am excited. I get to see Maryland at University of Portland next week. I will be over there at Joe Etzel Stadium to watch Maryland taking on the University of Portland Pilots. Really pumped for that one. Can't wait to go see that game. All right. Kennesaw State 13, Kentucky 1. AJ, I know you've been a proponent for this team. You've been a champion for this Kentucky team. It's not really that bad, but a 13-1 loss against Kennesaw at home, that's that's not fun. Look, Kennesaw State is the best Friday night team in the country. That, that's just <laughs> just who they are. I, mean, I was going to say that. That's just who they are. I mean, this is a team that went into Clemson last weekend and um, or two weekends ago um, and beat Clemson 18-1 to on Friday. Like, they, they just – what they do on Fridays is – it doesn't add up to what they do on Saturday and Sunday. So if I'm Kentucky, I'm not worried. I flush it. If I'm Kennesaw State, I try to channel that Friday energy into Saturdays and Sundays because their offense is explosive. Um, pitching depth does suffer a little bit later on in the weekends. But if that offense can continue to even put up half of those runs um, on Saturdays and Sundays, which there's no reason they shouldn't be able to, I wouldn't want to play them. Um, and I, I, I think that's going to be a lot of teams – facing Kennesaw State, especially as the postseason gets nearer and nearer. This is a team that um, in conference tournament, and if they make a regional, no one's going to want to see. It's just too dangerous for a team to play right off the rip. Yeah, you're not going to want to have that as your four seed in your regional. You're hoping that that is not the team that gets drawn to you right now, at least the way they're playing on Fridays currently. Jake, Kennesaw State 13, Kentucky 1. The, the score itself jumps off the page, but you know it never really felt like Kentucky was in this ball game at all. No, I mean, they had that eight-run eighth inning that really kind of pushed them over the top. But like AJ said, they're a Friday night team. They're five and six outside of Friday nights. They average 14 runs a game on Friday night. Outside of that, they're just kind of an average A-Sun team. But I think what really kind of we're going to learn from this game is Braden Osbolt attacking the zone, not walking anybody. That seems like it's going to be the formula to beat this Kentucky team as they really try and wreak havoc, play big in their ballpark. If you're pounding the zone, there's really not a lot of like cheesy things that you can do like bunning guys over. So I think that that's kind of the one thing I'm going to take away from this game is the formula to beat a Kentucky team that I know AJ is really, really high on them. And a lot of us are too as well. But, you know, for if you can't, if Kentucky flush it, move on. It's one game. They beat Clemson the same way, if not worse. So it was a closer game. But I, I expect kind of Kentucky to come out here the next two games. I agree. I think Kentucky takes care of the game. It's one game. It's one game. It's not the end of the world. You're getting ready for SEC play. It's not the end of the world. UConn 3, UCSB 13. UCSB seems to have found their footing here a little bit lately. Uh, That's a big win there for them against UConn. This UConn team is not bad, but they are not the UConn of old. 
Jake, when we look at this win here, UCSB coming out with the sticks, they got the pitching. They're, they're really starting to put it all together like the team that we had ranked at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think what I, I came away impressed with with this UCSB is just the depth of the lineup. Um, they got three runs with two outs in that second that really kind of blew it old, um, blew it open there in the fourth inning. But I don't think that this is the UConn team of old. And I think we keep kind of expecting and holding on to be that team. And I think that they just got outclassed by uh, a Spanish cowboy out there. I came away really, really impressed with these UCSB as they kind of get the ball rolling. Yeah, UCSB, we, we had them ranked for a reason. They have a pitching staff. They're deep. They have talent out there. They just didn't really click early. Now it seems like that team's clicking. Monty, I think this says a lot about UCSB more than it says about UConn this year. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, Matt Ager went out and did Matt Ager things. You know, six innings, two earned runs, quality start, hit the showers, job done. <laughs> um, you know, and you got – Parker and, and Mendez providing, you know, two home runs and eight of the RBIs that, you know, that takes care of business. So kind of, it kind of felt like business as usual for, for UCSB after, you know, a little bit of a slow start there against Campbell and, but they, they've responded well with last weekend against Oregon. And then this week with UConn, you know, not, not easy opponents, not, you know, those are, these are, these are solid programs. So I think it's I think it's showing why they were ranked in the beginning of the season and why they're back in some of the rankings this this time around. Yeah, and this UCSB team, it's driven by pitching, and we say Matt Ager goes out there and shoves. That's why he's a first team preseason All American. This guy has all the talent, he has all the arm talent. If he starts finding the zone again and starts beating people up, that this is why he's a first team All American. Columbia 2, UC Irvine 32. Now, UC Irvine did lose their first game of the year after this. They lost in the second half of a doubleheader to Fresno State. I know, weird to play two teams different in a doubleheader, but they did. But the 32-2 to two against Columbia here, AJ, that was all UC Irvine. Yeah, I was very confused as to why we didn't have a run rule here yeah. um, because it was out of hand early. Um, and, I mean, UC Irvine scored 11 in the ninth inning. Like, why are we playing the ninth inning? Um, but it was, I mean, UC Irvine came out and basically laid down the law and, uh, never let up. Uh, it didn't matter who Columbia brought into the game. It was, it was unfun for them the entire way through. Um, you might say UC Irvine, you know, probably rest on their laurels a little bit and then got blown out for their first loss, but it's baseball. You're going to lose games. Things are going to go very well and things are going to go very poorly. It just so happened to do that in one day for UC Irvine. Uh, but I mean, th this is, it's a very dangerous team. There's a reason we look at this team and say they are one of the best mid-major programs. They have a chance to actually host out West and be one of those teams. Um, they're right in the same conversation with UCSB as the best team in California, in my opinion. Um, it, it is. It was impressive to watch last night, but it also felt like the Simpsons meme where it's like, stop, he's dead. Uh, that, that's how I felt watching that game yesterday. And, and Columbia is a good baseball team. So this is like, okay, they're, they're beating up on somebody that's an Ivy. No, no, this is a good baseball team in Columbia. Uh, but, yeah, UC Irvine took care of business, and they lose 13-1 to to Fresno in the second half of that one. Just a tough first loss for them, but big win there uh, in that Columbia game. Another team that did, another Cal team, Jake. Cal beats UCLA 7-11. Uh, Cal wins that game. Christian Becerra, three innings, third relief win for him. He's been really lights out, and he's been like the stability for this Cal baseball pitching team. But a big win for Cal. Um, I'm going to go on a very, very unhinged rant about UCLA. I mean, they were up 7-1. It felt like this was like, okay, they're at an inflection point. They're getting it going. They're 2-7 and seven in their last nine. They really, really feel like they're just kind of going to be dead in the water in the Pac-12. Um, there's really – I mean, yeah, Cal kind of showed resiliency and kind of came back. But at the same time, like, UCLA shouldn't be losing to a Cal team. They shouldn't be two and seven in their last nine games. Yes, they've had max exodus, exodus of talent leave them and go to SEC schools. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is one of the premier, premier baseball programs in the nation. And they really shouldn't at all ever be under 500. And it's kind of an embarrassment to kind of watch these teams at times. Well, I know that myself and our producer Noah have been huge on 
Cal this year, and so it's a huge win there for Cal Bears. Really crazy to see that 7-1 loss. Just, just you know, they're down 7-1, and all of a sudden the offense starts rolling, gets going, and UCLA did not help themselves. A couple of under runs in that one as well. Uh, just, just crazy to see UCLA not even fight back once the run started coming from Cal. They didn't even attempt to score the rest of the game. So that 7-11, tough loss for UCLA. They got two more at Cal here, but I think it says more about the way that this Cal baseball team is rolling than anything else. ECU 9, Liberty 5. AJ, this 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 is a good win for ECU, but it, it's, you know, they got to start taking care of business against these teams like this. These wins are the ones you got to have if you want to be in that host conversation. Yeah, it's the ones you got to have. And, I mean, Trey Savage went out and did exactly what he needed to do. He just threw up another dominant outing. Um, you know, nine Ks, one run, over six innings, and then just lets the offense go to work. And the offense has been explosive at the top of that lineup. Carter Cunningham, Jacob Jenkins Cowart, Bristol Carter, acclimated very well to D1 baseball so far, um, you know, coming in as a freshman. It, it has truly been um, a well rounded ECU team. They took two of three from UNC in that rivalry series. Uh, I have been very impressed with ECU. I've been more impressed. Um, even with their number two starter, Zach Root, who we get to see go today, um, being that guy behind Trey Savage. Because we've seen ECU have a true Friday night guy before, and then the pitching staff behind him kind of slumps. What could separate this team and what could push them over the edge is the existence of that true number two starter. Zach Root looks to have been that guy so far, ERA under one. Um, I'm curious to see how he does against the teams that he should beat in conference when there's just a little bit more pressure. Um, but very impressed with this ECU team to start the year and to start this series. Yeah, they're going out there taking their business, battling against teams that are tough, and then they're beating out the teams that they need to beat. It's very good to see for this ECU team. Jake, I know that you're not necessarily high on this ECU team. You don't love them, but you got to be impressed by the way they keep going out there and winning games. Yeah, I mean, Trey Savage really, really goes and pounds the zone. He was up to 101 pitches, so as he kind of stretches out, gets into American Conference, expect him to kind of be able to handle that workload. But as, as much as I really like to clown on ECU, I mean, they had a lot of guys that really were talented that played big innings for them last year that left. And to just come in and replace them with the guys that they have as freshmen, I mean, it truly is impressive. And it's a testament to the coaching staff that ECU brings in. But again, this Liberty team's not like a slouch. Like this is a team that ECU very well could drop one of the next two and it really not kill their RPI. But again, when you have Trey Savage going and pounding the zone, you're going to win a ton of baseball games. And they're a team that I really don't want to see in a regional. No, not at the moment. And then they're, they got those aspirations of hosting and they have to win these games like AJ talked about. And then that one, two punch is going to be big for them in that conversation of being able to host. Thanks for joining us folks. We see that there's over 600 of you now viewing Go like and subscribe to our YouTube page. We do a ton of content during the week as well. Go check it out. See us on the Twitter there with College Baseball Central. Um, if you guys have questions also, send them to the chat. We got our producer there. He's going to go through some of them. If we have some good questions, we'll send them out and answer those questions for you. But we appreciate you guys. Over 600 viewers now live with us on Saturday morning. I'm going to go through a few schools really fast here that we didn't really want to talk about necessarily. Michigan 7, Coastal 8, they win that one in walk-off fashion in, the, in extra innings. Good win for Coastal, but Michigan just keeps finding ways to not hang on to ball games. Austin P6, Auburn 7, Auburn hangs on to win that one. Uh, University of New Orleans 0, Florida State 13. Florida State is 12-0. and 0. Don't look now. I know a lot of us had that saying that Link Jarrett could win Pitt Coach of the Year if they somehow make a run at this and get into the postseason. This, is, this Florida State team has been very surprising. Oregon State, LSU, uh, South Carolina, Clemson, A&M, and Tennessee all take care of business and win uh, their Friday night games as well. All right. I hope nobody takes mine this week, but I'm going to wait. Monty, who did something cool? Um, I, I, I have two. Um, okay. and I don't think anyone would have taken them, but uh, first I'm going to start with Caden Favors. Um, Wichita State. Everyone knows about the mass exodus in the offseason. Caden Favors is one of the guys who stayed. He had another outstanding start last night against Long Beach State. Seven innings, ten strikeouts. That's coming off a complete game shutout last week against Utah Tech and 6.2 quality innings against Virginia the week prior. So got to love that for Wichita State and Caden Favors. I thought that's a really cool thing. And then uh, Ben Miller, uh, the uh, the – 
childhood North Carolina Tar Heel fan, now Duke third baseman. Uh, you know, it's it's their it's the big rivalry basketball game today. But uh, he is hitting over 500. He went four for five yesterday against a very very good Wake Forest pitching staff to get. Uh, he is 28 for 53 with seven doubles, seven home runs. So. Uh, again, this Duke offense, which leads the country in home runs, continues to impress, and he's been right in the middle of it. Ain't no cheapies out there in Duke. I know they're just right above Oregon State with home runs this year. Both teams are slugging the crap out of the ball, but this Duke has, Duke offense has been very, very, very impressive so far. Jake, something good? Um, I, I have two as well, and um, I think some of us have this, but Coach Gambino getting his 300th win against the Harvard Crimson. Adam Sinceri had the walk-off as they were down in their home ballpark of Cary. Um, Penn State's really, really impressed a lot of us this year, and it was great to see kind of Coach Gambino get that 300th win. And then I'm going to go completely off the beaten path. I know that y'all love my little goofball baseball. Um, Dylan Palmer from Hofstra ran a 3-9-1 from home to first, which would grade as an 80 scale on a draft board. It was the fastest, I think, home to first we had seen in a long, long time. And credit to Hofstra for, I guess, making some headlines down there. Uh, re real quick, that guy can hit. Um, I, against UVA on opening weekend, he was on base like 12 times in that series against Virginia and is very, very good hitting-wise, not just fast. Very good, very good. Very good. Very, 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 very good. <laughs> and, and if I recall, he's only a sophomore, so I, I would not expect him to necessarily finish his career at Hofstra. He hit 389 last year. Surprised he's still there this year. AJ, something cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I have two as well, but I'm going to take more of a holistic approach and give some people some props for the stats they've put up so far. Um, going to start Georgia, Charlie Condon. Uh, hitting 549 OPS almost at 2.0. It's 1.985, which is insane. Um, 11 home runs, 21 RBIs. And this guy has played first. This guy has played third. This guy has played right field. He's played left field. He was in center field and making diving catches. He, he We talked with him um, preseason, and he was trying to work on expanding his basically ability to get on the field in any capacity. And for a guy who was right right field and first base and DH last year to go and be a center field caliber athlete is extremely impressive. Uh, pitching side. I think there's been no better pitcher in college baseball than Luke Holman to start the year. I just thrown 24 innings. He's given up eight hits, walked four guys, no runs, no runs, no earned runs. No one has crossed home plate when he has been on the mound, um, a whip of 0.5. It, it, it has been, incredible what he has been able to do for LSU filling big shoes. Um, he came in and Thatcher Hurd was the Friday night guy. Initially, we all kind of thought Holman was the better arm, had the higher end talent, but we didn't expect him to be putting up these numbers. It, it has been incredibly impressive. Um, I think he is the guy to lean on for that staff. Gage jump has been excellent as well. Um, but Luke Holman has been on another planet right now. He is uh, even though Brady Tiger had that incredible pitching performance, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Brady Tiger has been great, uh, but Hagen Smith had that incredible pitching performance. Arkansas just has incredible pitching performances. Um, Luke Holman is my pick right now for SEC pitcher of the year. When you can't score, that, that's it's hard to pick a guy you can't. I mean, doesn't give up yeah. runs. When, when, when you're putting up video game numbers like he has for LSU, he could be the key to that success. The offense hasn't necessarily been electric in every single game, but when he goes out there and pitches, it feels like LSU is going to get a win. It feels a lot like last year with Skeens on the mound there. It's, it's going to be exciting when we see that Holman and Hagen Smith match. Oh, there we go. Holman and Hagen Smith match up there was, in a couple weeks going to be really don't exciting. Get too ex I was going to say, don't get too excited. I was all excited about Santucci and Hartle. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's fair. That did not live all up right, to. So keep uh, Monty away from Arkansas LSU. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two as well, fellas. Uh, one of my longtime coach, great guy. We love him in the sport. He seems to just really care about college baseball. Tim Corbin getting his 1,000th win. Uh, huge for Corbin there to go get that 1,000 wins under his belt. Very impressive stat to get a thousand wins. It's just it's, to join that club, it, it's elite. It's elite, and he deserves to be there. My second one is a guy from UC Irvine, Joe Joe Oyama. 
hit a cycle for the Anteaters. He went five for eight with eight RBIs. He tied the record for most RBIs in a game by an Anteater. First cycle for anybody in the UCI uh, <laughs> spelling since 1981. So very impressive. Joe Oyama, thank you for going out there and getting that cycle. Would have loved some hits in the next game, but hey, that, that one in the 32-2 to two victory over Columbia is good. I mean, he had eight at bats, so I mean, yeah, he went a, five for eight. It's not like he went five and there was, five and there was no cycle, and that's probably why they didn't have the run rule. They wanted to make <laughs> yeah, sure they needed he him to get it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Joey Oyama will take the cycle no matter how you got it, buddy. All right, AJ, who didn't impress this weekend? I mean, it, it's is it is it rough to say? You know, Santucci and Hartle that they went in with so much. Uh, hype going into that matchup, and then neither one of them got through three. Uh, and it wasn't like they were, you know, walking guys and just giving up. They were getting hit around. It, it, it was incredible offensive performances by those two teams. But for the hype of going in, I mean, all the scouts showing up to watch Hartle and Santucci just duel, and then that just falls flat on its face and you know, in exchange for an offensive explosion. I think all those scouts probably left with more questions than they showed up to the ballpark with. Uh, but that that was my biggest letdown. The game itself was a, a, an awesome game to watch, uh, especially early, the back and forth, the home runs. Um, but as I was expecting a pitching duel. I was expecting a good quality matchup, and we got the opposite. We were expecting what we got out of UNC Pitt, and <laughs> – that was just I wish we could have surprise. seen Monty's just like <laughs> ripping up his paper, smashing his keyboard. The audacity, he, can, the yeah. audacity for AJ to take that from me when I am here and I made the trip for that pitching duel. And <laughs> Monty, I was staring you dead in your eyes on your camera too as I said that. That's he, like, I didn't he like what I was wondering. Um, he was like doing like breathing exercises. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to my second choice, which I guess was the weather. The weather yep. didn't impress me this weekend. Uh, we've got a lot of um, in on the East Coast a lot of games that are being moved around for for rain, and hopefully we can get those games in because it's first week of conference play for the ACC, and you know a lot of good baseball to play. So hopefully we can get some games in today uh, with this uh, weather system. So that that's other than the Santucci Hartle. Uh, <laughs> Uh, situation which by the way there were 50 plus scouts there yesterday like multiple mlt mlb teams sent like some of them sent two scouts like yep. and specifically to see that pitching duel but uh yeah the weather um hopefully we get the weather cleared up a little bit here on the east coast so we can get some baseball in yeah big letdown for the weather uh the last two weekends really have been just brutal for weather uh but we're getting closer we're getting closer once we get into the you know the end of this march schedule we start getting to that nice weather all over the country it's still cold up here in the Northwest. So, Jake, what at is your At least Wake has down? that. Before we kind of move on, Monty, at least we have Wake's kind of magic carpet down there. So there's no rainouts when you're playing on turf. So well, um, at least you'll get to see. So as long as it's not lightning, I mean, you'll get to see Wake Forest pitch, they, pitch today. They, were, they weren't confident yesterday, but I think this morning it looks pretty good um, after a certain time. So hopefully they get I, the game in tonight. <laughs> I, I know that everybody's going to be expecting me to go on an unhinged rant about Texas Tech, but I already did that. I'm going to go with another Tech team that they played, Notre Dame. I mean, they lost 11-3, um, only two-and-a-half-hour game, so really, really quick game. They really didn't impress me much. They only got three runs against the Virginia Tech staff that at times leaves something to desire. I mean, yeah, they have a good Friday night guy, but outside of that, I expected a lot more from this Notre Dame team. I know when I got to see them play at Rice, they were hitting the ball all over the yard, having quality at bats. So I think Virginia Tech has a step, step up from Rice, but I just expected them to come out with a little bit more fire on a Friday night. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, they got to come out there and take care of business, and especially a, a Notre Dame team that's been up and down and actually winning ball games this year. Uh, when I look at who didn't impress for me, it's, it's UCLA, unfortunately. This UCLA team it just continues to let me down with all the – high draft picks and guys that got in there and they just keep not succeeding. Uh, great for Cal Bears. Big on Cal Bear. Love that they're winning there, but just not impressed here uh, by this UCLA ball club. Monty, who did look the best, though? Duke. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I mean, Hart, by the way, keep in mind, Josh Hartle absolutely dominated him at the DPAP last season. 
And for them to come out and, and, and perform the way they did with, again, remember that everybody was questioning this offense coming into the season and they lead that, as AJ said earlier, they've got a dynamic offense that is scoring runs all over the place. They scored 28 runs in the midweek. They scored eight runs against what people were saying was the best pitching staff in the country coming into the season. And they are showing no signs of letting up. And then keep in mind, they've still got their own pitching staff that goes about 14 guys deep. I mean, Fran O'Shell and James Talon haven't even gotten going really yet being effective wise. If one of those, even one of those guys turns it on this year, they're, they're going to be extremely tough to beat with the way Charlie Bielinson is pitching at the end of the ball game as well. So it's, it's for me, Duke is not the number nine team in the country. They're looking like a top five program, maybe even top three. I would go some a little bit higher, them. Monty. Some, yeah. some of us higher? had them at five. Some of us had them at five, Monty. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Jake, who impressed for you? Who's the best? Who looked best? Ryan Prager from Texas A&M. He just continues to just stack on great start after a great start. Um, I got some stats here. 23 and a, two-thirds innings. 40 Ks, three walks, nine hits. Six of them were in his second start. So he's had back-to-back kind of one-hit outings. He's truly impressed me. I mean, he didn't even have a guy get to a three-ball count. He almost had an immaculate inning in the first. He had somebody fly out with two strikes on the third batter. I mean, he pounded, pounded the zone, which I know as an A&M fan is really, really kind of refreshing. And I know that, you know, there's other pitchers that have probably looked better but I think Ryan Prager right now is my pick for SEC Pitcher of the Year. Fair enough. He's been really elite for them, and he's been going out and getting wins, which is something that those a and starting pitchers did not do a season ago. AJ, who looked the best? Yeah, I'm going to go K-State yesterday. I mean, they casually just kind of threw a no-hitter against Cincinnati. Um, yeah. you know, won at 4-0, and that was – it felt like Cincinnati's, you know, welcome to the Big 12 baseball. We love offense. Here's a no-hitter. Suck it. Uh, and that's, that's just this is kind of how that felt. It felt like Cincinnati just, and that's a you know, team with a record above 500. Kansas State just kind of was like, we're still here. We're the Big 12. Um, it, it just it felt like Kansas State just dominated that whole game, even though it was only four to nothing. Um, so that that was that was a surprise because I don't think many of us were tuned in to K State Cincinnati with all the games going on yesterday, just to look up and be like, oh, K State no hit a team. Um, but it was a very, very dominant performance for them. Yeah, you know, I, I had that K-State no hitter on my, on my list there. Uh, so I'm going to go with the other Kansas school, beating TCU. Kansas taking care of business against TCU at home, opening Big 12 play for them. You know, you can say what you want. This TCU team has come back and beat a lot of teams this year, and for Kansas to just go out there and continue to keep pitching and keep getting those outs and win that ball game 3-1 showed a lot of guts there for Kansas. I know a lot of people do not have this Kansas team picked high at all in Big 12 play, but good for them to go out there and beat TCU in that home opener there. All right. What are you looking forward to the rest of the week there, Jake? Um, I know that we were robbed last night of a Hawaii Rice Parker Smith start. So I'm really, really looking forward to staying up late with all of you sickos watching this <laughs> Hawaii game. Fingers crossed that it's going to be on TV. If not, I'm sure Noah will work his hardest to kind of get that on TV. Because, again, we always start our day with this ACC team that's, you know, trying to beat the weather. And we always end it with Hawaii. And it almost feels like we as fans are robbed if we don't get to see Hawaii play baseball. This isn't the 1950s. We don't need radio broadcasts. <laughs> AJ, what are you looking forward to the rest of the weekend? Yeah, I, I'm excited to see uh, UCF, Oklahoma. You know, they played doubleheader today. Friday got yeah. rained out. Um, but this is a UCF team that's you know quietly 9-1 and one going into an Oklahoma team that's good, but record hasn't exactly reflected that. Uh, it's an Oklahoma team that beat Tennessee. Uh, so I, I'm interested to see, you know, how UCF basically steps into Big 12 competition, does at, on the road at Oklahoma against a team that's hungry and needs wins and needs to defend home field. Um, so that's a series that I'm very keyed in on. Doubleheader today, finish Sunday. But I, I am looking very much forward to watching that unfold. Fair enough. This UCF team has been very good this season and, and surprising a lot of folks so far. Monty, I think I know what you're looking forward to, but uh, what are we looking forward to? 
Yeah, it's pretty simple. I'm here in Winston-Salem. I'm going to the rest of the Wake Forest Duke games. It's the only top 10 matchup in the country. Uh, that's that's what I'm looking forward to, seeing what Duke and Wake Forest can go. It's a marquee matchup. I mean, you can't ask for a better matchup first week of conference play. I am looking forward to a lot of these Saturday starts. Now, we talked highly about a lot of these Friday night guys, but there's some really good Saturday starters out there. I, I'm excited for the Duke-Wake Forest game. Uh, Oregon and Arizona State. I want to see some of these guys go. Uh, I just want to go out there and watch some really good baseball today, and hopefully the weather stays us and uh, gives us some good ball games. All right, now to our Pick'em series. I think Noah's going to join us here for this one, our producer who also is on the show. Maybe not. He's got his picks oh, in there here. There he is. There he is, behind the scenes today. Oregon at Arizona State. Arizona State has picked up the first win there. AJ, how did you know they're going to walk off that first one? Uh, because I wanted Oregon to win. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of picked against some of these picks. It was like, oh, who do I want to win? Well, pick the other guy. Uh, and this is one of those series. And, you know, Really in the toss-ups, I kind of lead home team. Um, and so that, that was kind of the, the actual reason that I chose the Sun Devils over the Ducks. Yeah, and it came out, and it was a great ball game. Great Friday night there for both these clubs to start Pac-12 play. Big for Arizona State to get the win at home. Monty, you had Arizona State as well? Yeah, uh, two reasons. I'm a big fan of Nick McLean, and uh, and also Oregon's burned me before, so I wasn't going to let them burn me again. <laughs> um, so I went Arizona State, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yes, the Ducks have burned many a people before. Jake, you're with me and Noah here on this one. You took the Ducks. Yeah, I thought that they had really impressed me a little bit with how they have lost um, in some of their series. So I thought eventually the coin's going to go their way. Um, didn't happen on Friday night, but we regroup. I, I think the Ducks are, are going to come back. I know the Ducks always fly south for the winter, so hopefully they do good here. Ducks Noah, any, Noah, anything to add on to <laughs> for the Ducks? Well, I'll, I'll never say the phrase do good out loud, but I think that uh, Oregon needs to start playing a little little better. Um I thought that this would be one that they could kind of rebound after that UCSB weekend that they had. Um, I guess I was wrong. Let's see if the Ducks can figure it out, Mark. I know that you've kind of been a champion for the Ducks, and you get a lot of hate for that as an Oregon State guy. Um, this might be my last time joining you. Yeah, I, I've been <laughs> surprised. You know, this offense has really been pretty elite, and then some games that just disappeared, and it felt like they just kind of disappeared with the runners in scoring position last night. Ducks going to have to come back there. They wasted a pretty good start there from R.J. Gordon against this Arizona State team that can really drive the ball, especially at home. So uh, well, I, I have Oregon as well. What do we got for the next one? Pitt and UNC. I see that A.J. and Jake were smart like me and joined on this bandwagon. But I'm going to let I'm going to let Monty start with Pitt because I know he loves Pitt here in this one. Yeah, it's funny because Jake last week was all about Pitt, wearing the Pitt stuff, <laughs> trying to steal my thunder, and yet when push came to shove, he didn't stay on the Gritzburg train, did he? Um, no, I, 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 I still believe in this Pitt team. I still think they can they can win this series. Um, obviously, you've got to be disappointed if you hold UNC to two runs and don't win, um, but I, I, I still think they've got a chance here. Jack Sokol's still pitching. They've still got Ethan Firevet out of the pen. So it's still a really good opportunity for them to take this series. Um, they're just going to need to get those bats going. Noah, you took Pitt as well. Yeah, I think that this Pitt team has just kind of got it figured out right now. You, you you look at sports as almost like a cycle, and right when you're slept on is when you have the opportunity to do your most damage. And I think we saw that with Pitt so far this season, obviously losing yesterday. But I still think they're in a good spot after just losing by one, kind of a low-scoring deal. They'll figure it out today. I, I, I think that this Pitt team, like – like Monty kind of alluded to with the Gritzburg thing, they find just, just ways to win. And, and North Carolina is a team that I just don't trust yet. AJ, I, I used your logic for this one, and I took the home team because I felt like this was a coin flip series. What, what were you thinking here with this North Carolina club? Yeah, I mean, I kind of used Noah's logic and applied it to, you know, Pitt's the hot team coming in. They scored all those runs. UNC is kind of being slept on. It's like, oh, you know, they lost to um, ECU. They lost that series. Gave up some runs. This is a perfect coming out party for Pitt. Well, UNC is still UNC. Um, they're not going anywhere. Um, that pitching staff, I think, is underrated. Uh, Folger Boaz coming as a freshman and put up the stats he has in Fridays has been incredibly impressive. Um, it, it 
So I, I went UNC because I think they just defend home field almost better than any other team in the ACC. Um, they have a reputation to protect, and they're. I, I think they were coming into this one more motivated than if they would have won the ECU series. Yeah, Bo has taken care of business here and it's just been really, really good for this UNC team on a Friday when he was not always to be the Friday night starter. Really good for them to see them get this win. They, they need more offense, though. Jake, UNC? Yeah, I kind, of, I kind of was going the same thing. I think that they were going to get off the bus a little pissed off from that ECU series. But again, we're at a very similar spot where Folger Boaz dominates on a Friday night. UNC needs to take one of the next two to take this series. But this one really was kind of a pick em for me, but I think UNC is just a little bit better team than a lot of people give them credit for. I think Vance Honeycutt's eventually going to get it rolling. And I do want to say one thing. It took a lot, but I think UNC finally found a Carolina blue uniform that I hate. I am not a fan of those pinstripes. <laughs> I think those are the ugliest uniforms. The numbers are too big. The script is hard to read. I, I, they finally did it. I didn't think it was possible. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's get on to that next one. I did take UNC. Duke and Wake Forest. Oh, I thought I I screwed up and took the wrong team. But anyway, Duke goes out there and wins <laughs> that first one there. Noah, I see you had Duke. Yeah, this was kind of I, – I, I got a little nervous when the ACC guys did their picks. I know Monty's on Duke as well. They all picked Duke, so I thought, wait a minute, I'm, I'm on the wrong side here. But it's great to see uh, Duke play well last night. Obviously, it's a three-game series. Got to win one more, but – this Duke team, I think that, like you guys kind of talked about earlier, is almost a complete team and, and is up there with one of the best in the country right now. The question is, can they maintain it throughout the season? But I think that if you really want to be strong in March, I think Duke has kind of mastered the model of what that takes. Just got to stay healthy. And, and I think this Duke team can beat anybody in the country, as we saw yesterday. Uh, Monty, yeah, just for the, yeah, just for the record, um, I just checked the ACC pickums, and Jake, Jake has uh, ridden the fence on this one. Uh, he, had, he, took, he, took, he took Duke in the ACC pick him, and he took Wake Forest here. So he must have forgotten and couldn't remember which team he – I just wanted to make sure I was right. Yeah, there you go. It was, it was, a, it was truly a toss-up in every sense of the word for me. Yeah, because as soon as Noah said that every one of the ACC like, was picking Duke, I was like, that's right. There were only like two Wake Forest. And I don't think either one was Jake, and I, I went and checked just now. So, yeah, no, I, I myself flipped back and forth on this until I had to commit. Uh, I think on the podcast, the ACC podcast on Monday, I, I said Wake Forest under the gun, and then obviously I ended up with Duke in my pick em. So I feel pretty good about it after yesterday. Um, the reason I was thinking Wake Forest is is I was going to give the benefit to the home team, um, and they still could win this series with you know Chase Burns and Michael Massey going to, uh, over, over the next two games. So we'll see. I do have both these teams in Omaha, uh, so I really think that this is one of the best matchups. I just – it's disappointing that it's early, but it's also exciting, like I said earlier. AJ, you took Wake being at home? Yeah, I just looked at home. I looked at the starters. You know, Obviously, Hartle didn't have a great outing, but we didn't know that when we made the picks. Um, but then to back it up with Burns and Massey, um, yeah. give them three very good chances to win um, at home. They, their offense is kind of built for that ballpark. Um, so that was, that was my logic there. I think there was – a, a momentum on Duke, and I didn't want to be part of a entirely Duke pick, which I thought we were going to get. I wanted to be the one to center, and it ends up I ended up being the majority anyway because Jake can't make up his mind. Jake's all over the place. <laughs> I did take Wake because of them being at home, but I do love both these ball clubs. Jake, you took Wake as well? <laughs> yeah, and I took Duke earlier in the week, but I think what really kind of made me want to go back on Wake was I really thought that everybody in the SEC had just been piling on Wake, saying they're not that good, that they'd be the sixth or seventh best team in the SEC. And I think that this was going to be a series where Wake kind of wakes up, flexes their muscles a little bit, and, and says, yeah, we have the pitching lab, we can hit, and we can do that. And again, it was a toss-up game. I mean, they got no Friday night outing. And I don't think that Wake's going to have that problem a ton this year from any of their starting pitchers. So, I mean, this was a pick em in every sense of the word. And the real winners, Monty, are the fans who got to watch this series in person. Why are you, I, I'm, a, I'm an unbiased journalist. I don't know what fans you're referring to. <laughs> you're, you're a fan of college there. baseball, Monty. Yeah. You're a fan of college baseball in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was a blast, even though it wasn't what we expected. So, I'm, a, I'm looking forward to two really competitive games. Jake All was right. so excited to use the wake's going to wake up. Like that was. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, I was. 
I'm surprised that y'all didn't get that one, but well, I'm, uh, Ramani didn't lucky. jump on that. I made we're, a face. What's not to lucky, get? We're lucky he wasn't giggling the whole time while somebody else was talking while he thought of that. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought of it pre-show, Monty. Okay. Jake, you went all by yourself and took Texas. You look smart in that first one. Now, now, now the rest of us are hoping the Red Raiders come back for the next two. Jake, I'll let you talk a little bit here first. Um, I guess y'all don't watch the Texas show because I've been very, very critical of Texas Tech. They beat two of maybe the worst teams in college baseball in Texas Southern and Gardner-Webb and really, really kind of inflated their averages. But I thought this Texas pitching staff was going to come out and be very impressive. And I, Tech's pitching really, really worried me, and Texas seems to just feast on subpar pitching. And I thought Texas, I mean, this is kind of the last hurrahs. There's no plans to play this kind of rivalry game going forward. I expected it to be a little bit closer, but, I mean, if you're a Texas guy, I mean, you got Tanner Witt going on Sunday likely. Saturday you're going to get Charlie Hurley. I mean, it's exciting stuff. They really should take one of the next two. Yeah, I mean, Texas looked good in that first one. Monty, you went with the Red Raiders like the rest of us smart people. Yeah, I did. It's on the screen. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Um, no, I, uh, I, again, watching what Texas did last weekend probably played a factor, um, it, probably unfairly uh, in my decision making. And that's ultimately where I went. Um, uh, and I will confess, I do not watch Jake's show. Um, I have enough of him when I, when I deal with him on the ACC <laughs> podcast. So sorry, Jake, but everyone else, if you can't, you can't get enough Jake. He's got multiple shows. You'll catch him somewhere. Uh, he loves the camera. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, I went Texas Tech um, because of how Texas played last weekend against very good opponents. So that played a factor. But I also kind of knew Texas would show up on Friday night. So it, it, the question is whether they can get another win here, here in these next two games. Hopefully yeah. not blow a lead. AJ, I, I kind of assumed you are going to go Texas Tech here on this one, but uh, – but give us your reasoning here. Yeah, I mean, let's not pretend that Texas Tech has had a horrible year running into this. Their two losses before this game was Tennessee and Oregon State. Those are the only two losses. They beat Oregon. I mean, it, yes, they did roll over some weaker teams, but you're supposed to roll over the weaker teams. But So let's not act like Texas Tech was rolling into this 8-6, and six, having lost like a series to you know Podunk Tech that they had um, – they are product tech, though. Uh, <laughs> this this is a team that, yeah, pitching is a question mark, but I trust the offense. I trust um, the pitching depth to bounce back. I I believe that this is going to be a two-to-one split some way. They're not going to get swept by Texas. Um, Texas might win the series, but uh, I let's not act like Texas Tech is dead in the water in a bad baseball team. They're not. They had a no. bad night last night. Yeah, they had one bad night. We talked about that. Baseball's a weird game. You can come back and win. This. They can come back and do the same thing to Texas tonight, and it would surprise none of us except for maybe Jake. Noah, you went with the Red it Raiders would. as well? Yeah, I'm on Texas Tech here. I just think that the kind of golden rule is Texas Tech at home. And even though they lost last night, this is still a Tech team that we know how Sunday's going to go for them. It's going to be first to 50. Obviously, it was last night too. But I think that – Texas Tech's offense has the ability to stay more consistent than Texas pitching does. So we'll see if that kind of reigns true the rest of the weekend. Yeah, no, I, I was, I, I've been high on the Red Raiders. Uh, them in Oregon have been a little higher than most people around the country. I was surprised by this one, but not necessarily taken back. I still think the Red Raiders can win this series. Yeah, Noah loves all the Techs. <laughs> he's, he's a Tech whiz. You, Utah yeah. Tech. Yeah, he's neutral. Georgia <laughs> neutral. Tech. And we that. what's our last? Do we have what, what? One more? One more after this? Well, no, no, we got the yeah the, the upsets. The upsets well. yeah. Is this AJ, Tech again? This Detroit baseball team is very good. I know that I've been high on this one. For those who don't know, that is Coach Bobby Knight for Indiana. So that's Indiana and Troy. Uh, AJ, you took Troy. I did. I, I mean, I'm a huge Skyler Mead fan. Um, former pitching coach at South Carolina, um, Will Butcher. Um, up until yeah, they didn't play yesterday. Yeah, um, they played double up, in, up until yesterday, he has led D one in RBIs. Um, transfer from Charlotte, and this is without Shane Lewis kind of doing much of anything at the plate. He's hitting two hundred with one home run. Um, he's going to break out. This Indiana team isn't 
um, the Indiana team we thought they would be. Um, I, I, I think this is a perfect situation for Troy to go in and make a statement and try to catch an Indiana team that's probably looking ahead towards, you know, what they need to do in conference play um, after struggling non-conference. Yeah, I kind of went the other way on that one with the AJ. I went with Indiana because I think that they're a team that's licking their wounds and is going to come out and really battle back and try to get some wins going before Big Ten play. Uh, Noah, you took Coach Bobby Knight as well? (laughs) Yeah, I'm on Bobby Knight. Uh, Obviously, Jake's – when I was a a, a kid, Bobby Knight was at Texas Tech, so that hit close to home. Uh, But, but, yeah, I'm on Indiana. Did I break you there? (laughs) Yeah, you did. I really like this Indiana team. Obviously, they had a bad week last week just trying to rebound a little bit this week and get back to where they need to be. I don't think that this is a, an Indiana team that thrives in, in at being a team where, Oh, they might host regional, but it's going to be one when we get in big 10 play, they have a chance to really control their own destiny. Fair Jake, Indiana. Yeah. I was, I was kind of the same thing as, you know, Indiana had a very forgettable weekend last week, but I mean, Troy is a, a really talented team. I mean, they make great TikToks where they're striking everybody out. But I really kind of expected Indiana to kind of come out and be talked about again as kind of that host conversation and really just kind of play for the pride of the Big Ten. As you know, everybody's that's been the favorite kind of punching bag has been Big Ten baseball. I think Indiana answered the call, and I, I expect them to kind of come out and take these next two games as well. Yeah, they got a doubleheader today and then one game on Sunday, so we'll see how these games go for this team. Uh, Monty, you took the Indiana old- with us. Yeah, the audacity, though, of Jake to say everyone's favorite punching bag when his big bit from the preseason was calling Big Ten a mid-major. So, like, he acts like everyone else is saying it, but not him, when that was his big thing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I took Indiana. Um, I, I believe in in this team. I, I, I know they didn't have a great weekend last weekend, but I, I felt they were going to bounce back. Yeah, Jake feels like the guy who throws the first punch and then throws his hands up. Not me, not me. I didn't. I was definitely not the guy who hit him. We're all trying to find the guy who did this. Who did this? <laughs> He's just yelling at the mirror. Yeah. Who did this? Yeah, I just, I just, I make fun of Monty, and then Monty attacks him. Like, what the hell, man? Why does this guy bust my balls so much? <laughs> oh, now we have our underdog picks. So these are voted on, must be chosen by the opposite side. Everybody has to say the other direction there. I took Boston College. I, of course, lost both those games. The first one was close. Second one, not so much. Monty, you took Liberty. They lost the first one there. How are you feeling? Uh, okay. I mean, I Trey Savage was going to be a tough task for them. The question is whether the, the ECU's other two starters can really continue their, their good start to the year. Um, we'll see. Um, it, it's sometimes it's really tough to find these uh, these upset picks and get to get everyone to agree on. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, AJ, you had Kentucky, or sorry, not Kentucky, <laughs> Kansas. If you had Kentucky, you would be in bad shape. You had Kansas. They did win that first one. How are you feeling about these next two? Yeah, I mean, I I just went with eventually TCU is going to have to lose a game, right? And it, and if it's this series, then really I just need to win one out of two. Because if I'm yeah. already betting on them to lose a game just due to baseball, I just got to win one out of two. Kansas is at home too. I I like home underdogs. Um, it, it, I mean, they're all upset picks. It's, it was kind of a shot in the dark, but Kansas has quietly put together a very good start to the year as well. They're not a bad baseball team. Jake goes and picks bad baseball teams for his upset picks. Um, <laughs> but Kansas has played very well. Um, and TCU, I think, has their hands full this weekend. Absolutely. It's going to be a battle for the next two for TCU. Noah, explain explain Jake's for us. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Jake decided to pick uh, Houston over Baylor, which is also known as a favorite. Uh, They're not um, the favorite. Don't Houston give me that. Houston's the favorite. Are you kidding me? Baylor's like 4-9. Baylor Baylor just swept Oral Roberts last They're, weekend. They, they are four and eight coming into the series, Jake. You're not a favorite at four and eight. And this, on the I, road. <laughs> there's also, hold on, this was approved by a jury of my peers. It was not, so, nobody voted. No. I don't know how you slipped it in. You just voted no. with your picks and nobody said anything. This is embarrassing that you would pick this Baylor team or this Houston team, or anybody against Baylor and pick the other side as part of the upset. That's insane. <laughs> they were they were the only new Big 12 team to win. I They're mean, at home. They, They're at home against the Baylor Oh, yeah, because because four. Houston has such an electric, you know, fan experience that's going to change the game. They had oh. maybe 200 people there, if that. 100 of them probably were paid to be there. 
Probably more than are at Baylor games. Let's be Houston, honest. Houston. <laughs> Houston was eight and four coming into this, <laughs> they, they, and they're the home team. They they are not. They are not I, the underdog in, in, in any thought, way. I thought Jake was joking when he said it in the chat. <laughs> I, 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 I thought he got it backwards they, because he normally does. Like. <laughs> I, I expected – I even had a backup ready to go, but no one said anything, so I kind of did, you know, the the Ron White. The, Why would you even put it stopped? out in the first place? Nobody's stopping me. Nobody. His back, his backup was uh, was LSU over Xavier, right? <laughs> <laughs> Noah, who did you go with? Uh, I took Austin P. the Governors. Let's go P. Uh, good opening game against Auburn. They You could make the argument that they should have won that game. They kind of just let Auburn be Auburn late. This isn't personal for Auburn. I actually really like Auburn. Normally in these upset deals, I try and find teams that I don't think are that good and say, ah, there's a team that can beat them because anybody could in my mind. Whereas I actually think that Auburn is is like a national championship level team and really underrated. But uh, I think that this Austin P team is is not right there with them, but is a really good team in their own right. So I thought that that was a good opportunity. And they kind of proved me right game one, but I would like to see them come out on top so I could come in here and brag about actually picking an upset and not a favorite like Jake. Yeah, my upsets have never won. I don't even know if I've won a game yet well, with all my upsets. The thing, is, so. the thing is that the committee has noticed that Jake has won like two weeks in a row prior to this. It's true. Uh, it's true. He's, he's picking all these, getting... all these favorites. <laughs> like, yes. Vanderbilt so, over Northwestern is not an upset, just for the record. <laughs> Clemson over UNCG, not an upset. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you guys coming and joining us on Saturday morning. We're going to be doing this every single week, all the way till the rest of the season, all the way even through the College World Series. Join us on Saturday mornings. Come ask your questions. Let us know what you're thinking. Like and subscribe to the YouTube. We got tons of content. Like I said, we got the SEC, ACC, uh, Texas. We got Best Coast. I know we're going to have a new pod coming out for SEC hopefully soon. Uh, but we got some good content coming out for you guys every single week. We're producing a ton of stuff. Uh, these guys here on the screen – Bring the best in college baseball. We all watch a ton of games. It's great to see. We want to hear from you fans as well. So join us. Ask the questions. Let us know what you got. Final thoughts. I'm going to go to Noah first since you got to say the least today. Uh, yeah, just a, a great weekend of baseball. It's nice to have Midwest baseball kind of back, but then it literally snowed yesterday. So that's kind of a little tit for tat there. But let's uh, let's keep it up. Uh, the state of Kansas, outstanding last night. Kansas, Kansas State, Wichita State, credit Jake for that one. All getting the wins last night. Kansas State, no hitter. Kansas upset. And Wichita State is is kind of an underrated team at this point. Midwest baseball might be back, Mark. Yeah, you get you might get to see, uh, what, University of Portland Pilots at Creighton? That, that's correct, yep. Yeah, that's, that's an exciting one. That's more more Kansas baseball. UP, AP, UP, IP, thoughts? let's go P. UP, Portland Pilots. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I saw this comment in the chat, and I did want to touch on it. Um, Vandy is very quietly on a seven-game winning streak with pitching that has been very, very rough. It, it yeah. has been very questionable. Um, it, it almost feels like they deserve to have lost several more games than they actually have. Offense has bailed them out, which is weird for a Vanderbilt team. Um, Carter Holton seems to have gotten settled in last start um, yesterday, but it, it, it has been very weird to watch this staff just just not basically shut down weak offenses that they should be dominating with the talent on there. We all came into the year, and it was Vandy's staff, Arkansas's staff, LSU's staff are the most talented staffs in the SEC, and uh, Vandy hasn't pitched like it at all. Uh, yeah. So I, what I want to see is Vandy go out and just for the next two games, go out and shut somebody down. You know, go out and throw well, up a Vandy, zero or it's a one. a weird Vandy team, to be fair. Like, I got to see them in person. Like, their entire bench comes out, and they do, like, synchronized stretching. They've they done that for years, Jake. They've done that forever. Yeah, they've done that RJ for years. RJ Austin slams the ball down after every out. They, they take the weirdest in and out. Like, they have a guy that sits on third base and just cranks heaters at the first baseman, and the first baseman pick it out. They have, like, an air horn, and they have stations that they move around to in VP. They are, like, the weirdest college baseball team ever. They're very high energy. They're just like, a strange anomaly of a team. I would These like are, to know how that leads to the pitching staff giving up, like, nine runs a game. <laughs> um, this, 
this is AJ's final thoughts, Jake. I know you're a camera <laughs> whore, but you need to let AJ have his moment. Uh, it's just the, the talent is not equaling the results for Vanderbilt's pitching staff. And what really scares me for the rest of the SEC is I think a switch flips. I think they lock it in. I think they find some roles. And it's like, oh, Vandy was struggling early, but they didn't necessarily lose those games that they probably should have. And then they come into the SEC and they'll just roll teams. Um, that that is what I it's what I expect from Vanderbilt. Um, I, I'm curious to see if that actually happens. That's my AJ, final thought. I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now. I said if this Vandy team figures out its bullpen issues, they're they're pretty good. The offense has been much much better than we thought it was going to be this year. And if this bullpen figures it out, I'm with you. They're 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 dangerous. Jake, I'll let you go next because you seem you seem to have a lot to say here for your final thoughts already. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to talk now, right? Too. That's how that works. <laughs> it, I just, I just wanted to say I think I'm the only one that's seen Vandy and just the weirdness of Vandy. Like, like I I've seen Hagen Smith strike out like every single person he's faced. I see Travis Bazana hit a long bomb, and the thing that has stuck with me the worst is just the weirdness of this Vandy team. They are a strange team. Um, but my final thoughts is the rise of the Sun Belt. I think that this is turning into a deep, deep conference. I would go as far as to say I think it's better than the pack, Mark. I think the Sun Belt might get more teams in than the pack. I'm I'm not I'm not answering any more questions from Jake today. Monty, final thoughts. Um, yeah. Uh I, Wichita State, I wanna to touch on with Noah just uh they are. They do seem to be a lot better than we expect, which is a, 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 a testament to them because they had that mass exodus and they're definitely underrated. I saw them uh, in uh, in Jacksonville and they were rather impressive despite going one and two in that in that group. But um, I'm excited about Duke Wake Forest. I've talked about it a bunch, but uh, I'm about to go to Diolis, who is one of our uh, one of our podcast uh, guys from the ACC team, Nick. Di- Dioli, his family owns an Italian uh, deli, and I'm about to go get a chicken parm sub sandwich from there uh, before I before I get ready to watch some college baseball. So that's what I want to brag about. Oh, I am uh, extra jealous of that thought right there. Uh, I'm going to say my final thoughts here that I'm very excited that college baseball is back and getting rolling with conference play going right now. We get to watch a ton of really good baseball here for the next few months, and I cannot wait to spend it with these guys. And with you guys, every Saturday morning, come join us on the show. We're here live, 8 a.m. West Coast time, 10 Central, and 11 East Coast Mountain. If there's anybody in the mountain, please be in the comments, but I don't think we have any viewers in the mountain in the mountain range there. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, College Baseball's YouTube This is the weekend rotation. Join us again on YouTube. Go take a look at everything. 